Do some framing. Okay, so I can kind of see how everything fits in the uh, four sides of the canvas. All right, so uh, we're breaking this up into shapes. We're already starting off with one shape, right? Yes. So one of the things I like to do when I'm working with kids and stuff, and we're doing like a little art camp, is I will like do like a little, I'll draw a circle on the paper. And I'll ask them, how many shapes did I paint? Or did I draw? Okay. What is the answer? How many shapes did I draw? Two. I drew two shapes. Okay. The shape inside and the shape outside. All right. Um, so that's how we're thinking. This is a shape. This is a shape to be considered. All right. Beyond the objects on your on your palette, on your canvas, the negative shape is a shape that needs attention or that needs to be considered in your in your composition. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I'm nervous. I guess I don't know. All right. Okay. So I'm going to start off with a dark warm or midtone dark. And I'm going to just kind of lay out everything. Uh, I'd like to just find the relative size and shape of everything and just kind of gesture it in. And if you want to get good at your draftsmanship, there's a special thing you can do that will really, really help. It's called figure drawing. <laughs> because the human figure is the most beautiful, complex entity in the universe, in my opinion. And you can learn so much from figure drawing. So you can kind of see how I'm just kind of gesturing everything in and um, shaping things from simple shapes. So I'm going simple to complex. Um, all right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is squint and look for a light dark design. So there's a, a cast shadow that connects. I'm using a little bit of medium, not too much. And this looks like a mess. You know, a lot of people are like, will look at my painting and watch me paint, and they're like, I, I don't, I have no idea what you're doing. All right, so there's my light dark design. Um, I'm going to try to like keep this design uh, throughout the process of the painting. The light dark design is going to be really helpful. Because if you can maintain that light dark design, uh, which is also called a no-tan, which is a Japanese word which relates to light, dark, and design, um, it'll show up from across the room. So if you have a show with a hundred little tiny paintings and um, you're standing on the other side of the gallery, you can look at that little painting from across the room and see an abstract light dark design and hopefully it will be interesting enough for you to go up and inspect that painting. And buy it. And buy it, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna go dark to light. Okay, simple, flat shapes. I already mixed my green here, so 
I'm just gonna put that in. Notice that I'm not getting too white and chalky here. It's it's pretty not it's pretty clean, I hope it's clean. Oh, there's that dark apple. No, I think like you were mentioning earlier, you tried to reserve as little white you tried to use as little white as possible for as long as you could in yeah. preparing the palette. Yes, for sure. I'm also, at this point, what I'm doing is I'm gauging size relationships, proportions, if you will. All right, so uh, that cup, that little cup is about right here, and the big cup is about that much higher. And then I can see that this shoulder comes off this corner of this and then comes up into the neck and the mouth of that vase. Um, Let's see, I think I'll go ahead and throw in the cast shadows. So at this point, my job is to fill the shapes. I feel them. Okay, I feel great, nice and firm. And I go a little darker than I need to because it's easier, it's easier to go light over dark than it is to go dark over light. Very abstract, right? Where were my luchador? <laughs> Nacho Libre. I'm the Nacho Libre of painters. <laughs> my life is good. I get up in the morning and I make soup. In spandex? <laughs> <laughs> Push the shapes against each other. Look how abstract this is. So the way I like to paint is kind of like uh, what I call slow motion focusing. It's pretty blurry. And then it, little by little, I focus it and sharpen it. All right, so I got all the elements painted. Okay, the canvas, is, it's, it's, I've gone from edge to edge, top to bottom, side to side. All right, now I can go through and define. Um, all right, there's a nice dark shape here. I'm gonna go back to dark to light. So there's some nice dark shapes on this vase. And I'm gonna knock those in. There's a lighter gray shape. So even though I already pre-mix my palette, I always find myself remixing um, the, sh the colors. But the advantage to pre-mixing the cap palette is when I'm mixing a color, I know where that color is gonna get mixed. All right? Um, so I don't get muddy. I don't want to get muddy. There's enough confusion in my life. <laughs> slow motion mixing and slow motion focusing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah.
lighten that just a bit. So there's some nice reflected light here. And you can kind of see, I'm just making shapes. I'm not painting a mug. I'm not painting a vase or an apple. I'm painting the shapes. I'm painting what they look like. Paint with your long handles. Okay, unless you're doing like detail where you need uh, like a lot of control, I like to paint with with a straight arm, pretty much. Paint from the shoulder. Nice and clean. Let's go. And um, if you start to like deplete your piles, take your little hand and stick it in your paint box and grab a tube. Don't be trying to like scrape up the like the the dregs of your pile. <laughs> this is how I painted for like 10 years of my life, doing that. Like finally, like, this. I took a class from Matt Smith, and Matt Smith uses really nice paper towels, like Viva or something. Yeah. Like, and he's so fastidious that he would like use a paper towel, one wipe, throw it away, because he's like keeps everything clean. And uh, he tells a story about like one day um, Ken Oster, rest in peace was out in the desert painting and a like surprise thunderstorm just came up and he had to like book it and he left his stuff out in the desert he calls Matt Smith up it's like you're like go out down this road and get my stuff for me get my rig for me mm. and so Matt Smith goes out there and if Ken Oster is just a great painter just big loose brush strokes um, and it's just a mess and Matt Smith didn't even want to touch anything <laughs> because it was just covered you know so I don't paint like Matt Smith okay I'm trying to decide here okay yes yes get that shape in Super simple. This is so simple. Paint one edge into another. So sometimes if I can't get a, a certain shape right, I will have to like paint the shape that's like pushes against it and get that right. If I get that right, then I get the other shape right. So we're going back to that whole idea of this being a two-dimensional um, arrangement and um, there's nothing that's in front or behind. Everything is right next to everything else that's next to it.
and then the highlights, which are the artist's reward. Notice how I just like thick paint and just lay it on top. A lot of times the, uh, the, the bristles of the brush don't touch the canvas, but the paint does. I think I've had enough coffee. <laughs> But that doesn't mean I'm going to quit. I think there's a little bit of yellow in this. So um, if you get to this point where you have like just a nice little arrangement of shapes, you know, it's not super defined, but you get the idea. That's good right now. Okay. I mean, we're here to play. Um, we're not here to make masterpieces. You can go home and master paint in your <laughs> own time, okay? Um, that against there. This is kind of warm. Oh, shoot. Look what you made me do. <laughs> there we go. Nice and clean. So these edges push against that shape and there. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Questions? Answers? Insight.